tuned in to Greater Refuge Temple, the church in the heart of the city, with the people of the city in its heart.
Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. We greet you in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as the praise team sang, our lives are in his hand, right? How many feel that way today? My life is in the hand of God. He has blessed us and preserved us for another week. And we have come together to celebrate and to praise and magnify him for his goodness and for his grace unto us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we continue in worship and praise unto God, those who have a need uh, and would love to call to ask for prayer, unable to be with us, our prayer line is open. And the number for prayer is 646-255-1952. The prayer line again is 646 255 1952 Five, two. As we magnify the Lord today in our service of worship, we're going to have at this time our prayer. We ask that you would stand with us as we enter into our prayer. Minister Peter Linton will be leading us in prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and to be followed with our scripture reading by Elder Mike, District Elder Michael Dickerson, Minister Linton. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't you know that your life is in his hand this morning? Yes. Wherever you may be. Hallelujah. Our lives is in the hands of the Lord. Let us bow our heads and close our eyes. Look to the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, the lover of our soul, the creator of heaven and earth, oh God, the one that ruled the universe, Lord, we come before you this morning, humble as we know how. Lord Jesus, the Lord, the way maker, the Lord, the life giver, the Lord, the healer, Oh God, we thank you this morning for enabling us to assemble in your house, your house of worship. Lord Jesus, we're asking thee right now to forgive us of our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord Jesus, you know what we need, but we're asking thee right now, Lord Jesus, let your precious blood prevail. Lord Jesus, someone is waiting on you right now, Lord Jesus. A long time ago, Lord Jesus. Someone been knocking this morning, Lord Jesus. Oh God, asking for mercy. Lord Jesus, you grant us mercy already, Lord Jesus. Let them apply themselves to mercy right now. Mercy is yours this morning. Lord Jesus, thank you for seeing us through your blood. Your blood that you shed and covered the cross for the healing of the nation. You took the stripe on your back. Oh God, for the healing of the nation. Someone is sick this morning. Someone in the hospital this morning. Someone in the prison this morning. Bow, Lord Jesus, in your mind. Lord Jesus, loose right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We are going to clap our hands. We're not going to wait until the battle is over. We're not going to wait until the battle is over. We're going to shout right now. Hallelujah. Someone is laying down right now. Lord Jesus, Jesus. Watching us, Lord Jesus, on the television. In one of the media, they're watching us, Lord Jesus. They need help, Lord Jesus. Someone is discouraged this morning. Oh, God, someone needs strength this morning. You are the strength maker, Lord Jesus. You said, let the weak say you are strong. Let them know that you are strong. They are strong to you. Oh God, because you are the powerful God. You are the mighty God, the everlasting Father. And though the King of kings, Lord Jesus, let your precious blood flow, Lord Jesus. Oh God, this nation, Lord Jesus, I need you, Lord Jesus, more than ever. Lord Jesus, stretch out your hand, Lord God. Your hand on the shoulder to hear our heavy, Lord Jesus. Hear us this morning. Hear us this morning. 
hear us this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we give you all the praise on the honor due to your name. In Jesus' precious name. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Clap your hands and say amen. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Very uh, powerful scripture written from the hand of David, Psalms 124, and it reads as this, if the Lord had not been on our side, if the Lord had not been on our side when men attacked us, when their anger flared against us, they would have swallowed us alive. The floods would have engulfed us. The torrents would have swept over us. The raging waters would have swept us away. Praise be the Lord, who has not let their teeth tear us apart. We have escaped like a bird out of the foulest snare. The snare has been broken, and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. May the Lord add a blessing to that reading that it may sanctify our hearts in Jesus' name. Thank you, Minister. Minister, uh, Minister Peter Linton for the leading us in prayer. And we thank God for the reading of our scripture by District Elder Michael Dickerson. We praise him, we magnify the Lord today for all that God has done for us. We want to thank God for the blessings that we have here at Greater Refuge Temple. And even during these very difficult times, we are blessed of the Lord to have faithfulness outside of the pulpit. And we thank God for leadership shown in the music department with uh, Dr. Jennifer McCarroll Johnson, our directress. But very importantly, Minister Ernest Billups. Yeah. Leading in the music department in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God for his dedication and faithfulness under trial. And, and we want to thank God for the praise team. Every member of the praise team. The one that's here today. Are you the B team or the A team? A? They're the A team. And then the B team, the other praise team. All of our praise team uh, participants singing and praising God during these very difficult times. Very difficult times we're living in. But they have been faithful in their service unto the Lord. We want to thank God also for the ushers and for their faithfulness. Ushers and security. And along with the ushers and security, we have our health department. Our health department. And they have been faithful in uh, being here on time, taking temperatures. And they have been uh, making entrance into the church easier for us. And we're blessed with the Lord. And now we've advanced. They don't have to take temperature. Just wave at the machine and say hi, right? The refuge Temple is on the move. Uh, thank God for technology, making it easier and safer for us to worship the Lord. In the midst of all that's going on with this new variant, Delta, and the increase of cases, all that we can do to make it safer, we will do that. And hand washing that they encourage you to do once they take your temperature, and check you in before we enter service time. Thank God for blessing us that we are coming through this crisis and doing well. And the Lord is to be praised for all that he has done for us, all that he's doing for us, and all that the Lord will do. And we want to thank also Minister Tyrone Holmes who's going upstairs now. Thank you. Brother Ty, for your faithfulness and service to our church. Uh, 
not only in Sunday morning service, but also our Friday afternoon uh, praise and worship service. Minister Holmes Tyrone is there faithfully taping and sending out in the hearts and homes of those who are not able to be here at the service of the Lord. So we praise God. Give God a hand for all of you, for yourselves. We thank God for you, for your faithfulness and for your support of this service. We're going to call upon our praise team again, and they're going to bless us with the selection in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our praise team.
thank you again, praise team, for blessing us in song. The Lord is our joy. He's our strength. He's our all in all. God is our everything. We're so blessed of the Lord. I mentioned uh, several of the groups that have contributed significantly to our service. And without them, we would not have been the same. Service would not have been the same. And we thank God that even during this pandemic, and the part that made it even more difficult, we had uh, to suffer uh, the breakdown of our air conditioning system for the summertime. Uh, and they still came and they still served. Our deacons, of course, in their service to the church, we thank God for our deacon, uh, the Board of Deacons under the leadership of Deacon Arthur Davis, and the Board of Trustees under the leadership of our Deacon Neville Roseman. Thank God for you and for your service unto Greater Refuge Temple. I want to thank the Lord for also for our ministers faithfully serving the Lord here at Greater Refuge Temple. All of the ministers coming steadily, serving God, praising God, and we thank you for your service to this church. And may the Lord ever bless you as you continue and worship and praise the Lord. And things are much better than they were, and the Lord has been good to us today. We have a nice day, right? A nice day, right? Give the Lord a hand praise. Give him a hand praise. God has been good. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I was told, we were told in our meeting with our HVAC team, the contractors, that we would have some kind of air today. Uh, well, the Lord took care of that in part, but I saw pictures of them lifting the uh, unit off of the building around the corner with a crane and placing the new unit around the corner. And on yesterday, did the same thing for the church here. So it's much closer than it was. The units are being installed, all connections are being made, and they will be supplied with the necessary refrigerant and so forth. So we will get much better inside. But until that time, thank God for those of you who are serving in spite of conditions of life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have been certainly wonderful. Thank God for you and for your offerings you've given to Greater Refuge Temple during the whole pandemic. You have still serviced your church and supported your church. And without you, we would not be able to be open and praising God. And besides that, our service is going out into the hearts and homes of men and women who worship with the Lord with us today, live streaming. Thank God for you, Greater Refuge Temple, for your support, your finance, uh, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in line with that, I want to ask you at this time to be prepared to give. Prepare yourselves to give in the house of the Lord, giving financially in your tithes and your offerings. Uh, the Lord has blessed you, and you've earned your wages, received your wages. Now is the time to give in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Giving in tithes and offerings to Greater Refuge Temple. You may give uh, via Givelify uh, electronically, and then uh, in our usual manner, those who give to our church, your tithes and your offerings, you may do so as our ushers have tithes and offering envelopes for those who did not have one. Place therein your tithes and your offerings, and put your contribution number there that might go to your credit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's time to give. The Lord said it's more blessed to give than to receive, right? And we thank God for the privilege we have to give unto God in our tithes and offerings. We give unto him with thanksgiving in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So prepare to give. Take your offerings in your hands and we'll bow our heads in prayer and consecration in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Did you feel something? I felt something from up there, right? Thank God for it. It was a burst of air. Right, Minister Linton? Thank God for it. 
It's getting better all the time. Thank God in Jesus' mighty name. As we prepare to give in our tithes and our offerings, take your envelopes in your hands, your offerings in your hands, and we'll bow our heads in prayer unto God in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, dear God, we thank you for your goodness unto us. Thank you for your grace unto us. We ask that you would bless in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ each and every one of your children here at Greater Rapids Temple and those in the land, O oh God, of television who are worshiping and joining us, O oh God, by various means. Bless them as they give. Bless the gifts of their hands. Bless the gift and, Lord, bless the giver. We pray and we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, let all of those people say amen. Amen. It's offering time. Give and bless the Lord in the name of Jesus. We want to acknowledge the presence of uh, Sister Linda, Linda Terry Chard. I think that's it, huh? Linda, we're glad to see you to be here with us today. And this is also in memory of her mother's 95th birthday, Mother Dorothy Anderson, someone who served our church for scores of years, who contributed so much to the Greater Refuge Temple Church. Thank God for Mother Dorothy Anderson, longtime missionary president and worker for excellence here at Greater Baptist Temple. The Lord has blessed her, and the Lord called her home from labor to reward, and we will see her very soon. And all of God's wonderful people, we will see them very soon. Sister Linda is here, and there was a donation made to the missionary department, I think, uh, on behalf of the uh, Mother Andersons, and we thank God for the contributions that were made, and still supporting the work of the Lord uh, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. 95 years old she would have been. Thank God for her service, Mother Dorothy Anderson, and for her memory. And the concern of the family and support of the work that she gave so much to when she was with us. Thank you so very much in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. for giving in the name of our Lord Jesus, living to bless the work of the Lord here at Greater Refuge Temple Church, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, thank God for you each and every one, in the name of Jesus. And as we continue in worship and praise unto God, we're going to have selection, final selection from our praise team. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and they're going to praise and magnify the Lord. Bless the Lord with them. And following the praise team, the next voice you will hear will be that of our assistant pastor, Bishop William Wilkins, Jr., who will bring the word of the Lord to us today. Our praise team, and then our speaker with the word of God, Bishop William Wilkins, Jr. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord. Just look at your neighbor and say, name of God has been good. He's just 
Hallelujah. I so, I so appreciate the enthusiasm of our praise and worship team. Amen. As they were singing about the goodness of the Lord. And I saw David and the team begin to jump and leap. And I looked at some of you and uh, you look kind of lost, didn't know what to do because the leaping wasn't an option. Amen. But if you can't leap, you can still wave your hand. You can give God the glory, the highest praise. If he's been good. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. He's been good. I said he's been good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, a church... A church like this church, amen, uh, that is at least five generations deep, amen. We've got people of all sorts of uh, ages and, and uh, all sorts of makeups, amen. But it's so good to be able to praise God your way, amen. A place where you have the freedom to give God the glory, the honor, and the praise, amen, the way that God has blessed you. And so today we celebrate the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and the work of God that God is doing in all of our lives. Amen. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you and we praise you. We love you and we adore you. Father, we thank you, God, for this day and this opportunity you have given us to come together, Lord, to worship and to magnify you. Because, as the praise team said, you've been good. Lord, you've been good. You've been better than good. Amen. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And for that, we thank you. God, we ask you now, Lord God, that your anointing will fall afresh upon us as we minister to your people, God. Oh, God, we ask you to move me out of the way and speak a word of victory, a word of life, a word of healing and deliverance to the hearts of your people. Lord God, we ask right now to bind anything that would hinder the preacher or the hearer. Lord, we ask right now, Lord God, that you would touch those who are brokenhearted, those, Lord God, who need your strength. Oh, God, we ask right now that you would touch the bereaved families in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, God, we thank you today for all that you have done and all that you are doing. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. We certainly praise and thank God for his goodness and mercy towards us. Amen. And all that God is doing in our lives, and we do honor our pastor, Bishop Charles Wright Sr., Amen. We praise and thank God for him. We praise and thank God for Mother Wright. Amen. Uh, certainly we praise and thank God for the leaders of this house. Come on, put your hands together for our pastor and first lady who worked so diligently, who worked so hard, amen, to uh, minister to the needs of this great church. Amen. Uh, who have led us and guided us through this pandemic and continue to still guide us and lead us with good sound amen advice and amen sound doctrine so that we can continue to do the work of the Lord and I certainly do acknowledge all of my brothers in Christ who are here all of the elders and ministers who are here we praise and thank God for you we honor amen uh, missionary Janice Johnson our missionary president we praise and thank God for her who is doing a splendid job with our missionaries we are so proud of the work that she is doing and I and my wife and I, along with Bishop Wright and Mother Wright, has been said before, certainly salute the memory of uh, Mother Dorothy Anderson, amen, on what would have been her 95th birthday, amen. And we certainly salute, amen, her family. God bless you, uh, Dr. Linda. We praise and thank God for you, amen, and the work that you continue to do in your mother's name and Renee and all of the family. We love you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's go to the word of the Lord on this morning, found in Galatians chapter number 5. I don't feel no waste time Come too far from where I started from Come on, praise team, help me out. Nobody told me the road Yes, I don't Anybody 
you believe that? Would you say that with me? I, I don't hear no waste time. Oh, yeah. I come to God from where I started from. Nobody told me the road would be easy. And I don't believe you want me this far to leave. I just can't give up now. I just. on this wise I'll jump around but uh, bear with me stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage behold I Paul say unto you that if ye be uh, circumcised Christ shall profit you nothing for I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ is become of no effect unto you. Uh, whoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. For we, through the Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Verse number seven, ye did run well. Who did hinder you? that ye should not obey the truth. Uh, this persuasion come not from him that calleth you a little leaveneth, leaveneth a whole lump. I want to also read that verse beginning at verse number seven in the New Living Translation, uh, which I think will help us out a bit. It reads on this wise, ye were running your race and you were running well. Who held you back from the truth? I want to talk to you for a little while from the thought, who, who, who? You know, uh, I've been serving the Lord for many years and there have been times in my life where I must admit that I have become a bit off-centered, a bit unfocused because of the challenges, amen, that were around me. Do I have any witnesses of anyone here who have ever become a bit off-centered? Amen, sometimes, you know, things and people and situations Amen. Can uh, put us in a position where we find ourselves becoming a bit off centered. And so the Apostle Paul, who is writing to us now 
a man writes to us to share with us uh, some of the challenges that I believe will help us out in this day and time that we live in. You know, it was the Apostle Paul who would write to the Church of Galatia. Uh, he is the author, amen. And what we see here is he is writing to some individuals who seem to be having some spiritual challenges. Whether we realize it or not, beloved of God, as we serve God, spiritual challenges do come our way. I know it would be so well if we could all profess that we have been serving Jesus with no real hiccups. But if you're like me, uh, I can't make that testimony. There have been some times that I have had some spiritual hiccups. Amen. And what the Apostle Paul needs to do is he needs to challenge these individuals, uh, fairly newly saved individuals who amen, who are now being disturbed by those who would try to come in and move the church away from the heart of God. I want to talk to you today about a spirit that seems to be invading the land that if we're not careful, amen, the enemy's plan is to move the people of God away from the heart of God. Uh, it is important for us to understand, uh, and I hope I don't get any booze or any tomatoes thrown at me here, but uh, it is of importance for us to be very clear that the Word of God is constant. I didn't get any amens there. I said the Word of God is constant. Uh, this is the same word that Bishop Lawson came to us from Ohio with. This is the same word, amen, that he preached, amen, until 19, from 1919 to 1961. This is the same word that Bishop Bonner brought from Detroit, Michigan with him as he preached the gospel, amen, and preached it until, amen, 2015. This is the same word that in 2016, Bishop Wright, Amen, along with his lowly assistant, Bishop Wilkins. Amen, tries, amen, to preach to you every week. No diversions, amen, uh, no going astray. It is the word of God. And I would like to challenge you today that everything else is going to pass away, but the word of God will stand always. Now that I have put that thumbprint in the sand, it is important for us to also understand that it is uh, important that we not take away or add to the word either. Hello, lights. You know, you know, this is where we get funny. Because, amen, if it's not in the word of God, then that means that is just your preference or perhaps your, your thing, amen, and, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Amen. But it's important to make sure that it's found in the Word of God. And I'm not talking about it has to say specifically in the Word of God, thou shall not beat up your neighbor or thou shall not uh, 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 step on your neighbor's toe or anything like that. Amen. But there has to be uh, uh, some uh, reference to a behavior or something in the Word of God in order for us to embrace it. Because when we start building things that are not on the Word of God, Amen. They will stray. It will only last as long as the leader can enforce it. Hello, lights. Uh, uh, but the word of God will stand always. Yeah, I'm going to be preaching by myself today, Mother Right. Pray for me. Amen. B -b because I think that there, there sometimes becomes a challenge between preference, amen, and the word of God. So this is what the Apostle Paul is dealing with with the Church of Galatia because they were having some challenges that had come up about circumcision. And so there were these Judaizers who began to infect the church. Amen. They were Christian believers, but they believed that, yes, Christ had done everything that he had done on Calvary's cross, but you still needed to be circumcised and follow Jewish tradition in order for you to be really saved. You've got to be careful, children of God, when people start telling you that Jesus Christ is not enough. <laughs> I'm, 
I've come to tell you today, amen, that the work that Jesus Christ did on Calvary's cross was a complete work. I'll say that again. The work that Jesus Christ did on Calvary's cross was a complete work. That's why when Jesus was hanging there on Calvary, amen, one of the final words that he said was, it is finished. <laughs> there's nothing, there's no one that needs to come behind me to do anything other than what was done on Calvary's cross. So what Jesus expresses to them is that the work has been completed. Amen. He became our, uh, he became our, uh, 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 the person who paid the price for us. He, he became the person who, who took away our sins. Man, the law, as Paul will explain to them, amen, was just simply there uh, to help, uh, to keep them in line, to help them on their walk with, with God, amen, uh, until Jesus Christ revealed himself through, amen, a woman by the name of Mary, and he would uh, uh, begin uh, to, to die on Calvary's cross, but the work of Calvary was a finished work. And so what we see here is the Apostle Paul, man, wants them to understand this. He wants them to understand the importance because these Judaizers came into the church, they were starting to rile up people around other doctrines. I, I've come to tell you today, amen, I believe in the teaching uh, of the church of our Lord Jesus Christ in a greater refuge temple. Uh, I may be the only one, but I believe in it wholeheartedly. Amen, amen, I believe in one Lord. I believe in one faith. I believe in one baptism. I believe that there is one God who is in all, who is through all, and in him we live and move and have our being. I believe that baptism in Jesus' name is correct. I believe, amen, uh, baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost are mere titles, but we were instructed to baptize in his name. I believe, I believe that uh, receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of uh, the initial evidence of speaking in tongues is correct. I believe that it is meaningful, it is purposeful. Amen. And the Holy Spirit is for our everyday living. The Holy Spirit is not just there to make you jump and leap. I didn't hear anything. I said the Holy Spirit is not just there to make you jump and leap. The Holy Spirit is for everyday living. Man, to help us work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Therefore, if the Holy Spirit is moving and is evident in the life of the believer, then the believer, amen, has an anchor for his soul. The Bible declares that the Holy Spirit would not just amen, uh, lead us and guide us, but the Holy Spirit would also teach us all things. Amen. And so the Holy Spirit is a teacher. And so the problem becomes, what happens when the church no longer looks like the church? What happens when, when, the, when the saints no longer, amen, uh, act like the saints. What happens when we have been shut down for, amen, at least 13 months and we have gotten accustomed to listening to all of these different folks on Facebook and YouTube. And we've been listening to folks, amen, and everybody's saying something different. And now you have to now reconcile in your mind, and are they right, or is what I have received, is that right? Now there becomes a struggle within the mind. And I think our pastor said it last week, and I so agree with it, amen. The way we were taught when we were coming up, amen, you don't eat off of everybody's table.
teaching this strange stuff. This just this strange doctrine that had the potential, amen, to scatter the people of God. That if it caught on long enough, and if it went on long enough, that it could do damage to the people of God. You've got to be careful listening to people, amen, who are coming up with new erroneous gospels, amen, uh, that they're trying to get you to believe. You know, uh, uh, there are some people who you may listen to and may love who says, well, you don't need the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit was a thing, amen, back in the Bible days. And now, amen, they'll even find scriptural reference and tell you that the Holy Spirit is no longer falling on people and speaking in tongues is a thing of the past. Man, I hear you all writing notes. You're in, ingesting all of this stuff into your spirit. And if you are not careful, if you listen to it long enough, you'll start saying things like, it doesn't take all of that. And so this was the spirit the Apostle Paul had to arrest. He had to deal with it. Because, amen, uh, it was becoming contagious. The Apostle Paul lays out the fact, amen, that, that he is an apostle of Jesus Christ. And not only is he an apostle of Jesus Christ, but he's working under the Holy Spirit. The apostle Paul, amen, in this book gives his testimony how the Lord saved him, how the Lord anointed him. Then he goes on to talk about his relationship with the other apostles. Amen. It is in this book that we also find the Apostle Paul bearing reference, amen, to his fallout with even Peter. Peter who was, amen, uh, apostle to the Jews. Uh, and Paul wasn't afraid to, amen, confront Peter even though Peter, amen, had uh, 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 done a great work for the Lord Jesus Christ and continued to do a great work for the Lord Jesus Christ. But Paul said that you're, you're serving somewhat as a, as a hypocrite to some degree. He says, amen, you're doing one thing uh, by eating with these uncircumcised folks. And then uh, when the other apostles and others come around, uh, you, you shun them. And so the apostle Paul brings correction even to Peter. And so it is this, that he builds this case, man, that we've got to be careful. Because even him having to correct even the apostle. And I would like to suggest to you that you got to even, amen, biblically reference everything that even leadership says. And if it doesn't line up with the word of God, come on here, somebody. If it doesn't line up with the word of God, it's an opportunity for you to uh, say to leadership, well, what does this mean? Can you explain it to me? Perhaps you may just simply have a misunderstanding. Or perhaps even, amen, uh, you can even sometimes bring correction to leadership. Man, you remember, uh, that's what uh, happened to David. You remember, amen, when he had killed Bathsheba's, uh, uh, Bathsheba's husband. Amen, and then the prophet came to him and said, listen, Gave him a scenario of someone who had mistreated someone. Uh, uh, and David's response was, well, show me who he is. I'll, I'll deal with him uh, cruelly. And he said to him, thou art the man. And leadership, and I certainly know, amen, this leadership, amen, is not above someone saying in the proper respect, thou art the man. I think it's all important that we, that we not stray away from the word of God and hold each other accountable to the word of God. And that's what Paul is saying uh, for the most part in the text. But he says to them, you were running well. You, 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 you were doing great. You, you were running well. You were, you were doing everything possible to run this race for the Lord Jesus Christ. Man, but who hindered you? Who, who hindered you that you would not obey the truth? And I, I come to talk to someone today 
who, who, is, who is in the midst of a spiritual battle and you don't even realize that you are in the midst of a spiritual battle. You're now simply saying things like it just doesn't take all of that. We don't have to go to church every Sunday. We don't, we don't have to fellowship with the saints every Sunday. When the Bible talks and tells us clearly about assembling ourselves together and not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together, amen, you should be able to check yourself through the word of God. And I want to caution you that we not be given to the philosophies of men. We not listen, amen, to, to, to the strange spirits that seem to be trying to creep their way into the life of the believers with things that sound good. And to some degree, if you ask the human mind and you ask the flesh, well, that sounds great. Well, you know, folk don't want to go to church like they used to. Now, I don't understand a new church. Huh. Sister Gwen, they wouldn't have made it with us because, amen, we had Sunday school, amen, early in the morning. Then after Sunday school, we had 11 a.m. service. Then we had a 4 o'clock service. Then we had, amen, an 8.30 service. I didn't say 7.30. I didn't say 7 o'clock. 8.30 service. And we praised God and was happy to praise God. We were just so honored to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. We were just so honored. Amen. And I'm not, I'm not suggesting that we should go back to any of that. But what I am suggesting to you is that we've got to be careful that we don't cheat down the Holy Spirit. Just like some of you right now looking at your watch wishing I would hurry up and sit down. I see you. 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 I'm almost done. <laughs> yes, Lord. But you're going to leave here and go to Costco's. And you'll spend two hours in Costco's. You're going to leave here and go home and watch the basketball or football game, amen, or a baseball game, or turn on, amen, uh, your favorite movie on Netflix and watch that for an hour and a half and never look at your watch. <laughs> who did it? Who, who, who bewitched you? Who, who, who messed you up and told you, amen, that it doesn't take all of this? I, I come to tell you, amen, that I, I was saved since the age of 10 years old. And I've come to tell you, I thank God for Refuge Temple. Oh, Mother Kennan, I thank God for the way that I came. I thank God, amen, for all of those Sunday school lessons, the Me Too lessons, the beginner's class. I praise and thank God for Terry Bunyan. I praise and thank God, amen, for all of the Sunday school teachers. Amen, I praise and thank God for it. I know we've got sophisticated now. And I know we feel like it doesn't take all of that now. And I know your favorite, amen, YouTube preacher, amen, is finished in 20 minutes and everybody goes home and feel like they're complete. Ah, but I'm getting ready to go to my seat now. But I've come to tell you, amen, hallelujah, that this little boy from the projects needed every last bit of it. <laughs> Yes, Lord. Amen. I know you're saying it may not take all of that, but I've come to tell you if it wasn't for the church, if it wasn't, amen, for this great church, if it wasn't for Bishop Bonna having those anointing services, amen, until 11, 12 o'clock midnight, I would have been in jail or on drugs. Or, amen. If it wasn't for people like Mother Dorothy Anderson, glory be to God who... Uh, uh, who would get up in the middle of a service, amen, and start tapping on the altar, amen, and you could see that God was moving in some unusual and strange way. We didn't understand it, but all we know is that we felt the glory of the Lord filling the house. Yeah, and I know that, amen, they're telling you it doesn't take all of that. 
Amen. But I've come to tell you, amen, you've got to be careful what you are ingesting. Because, amen, what the apostle says is a little leavened leaven a whole lump. And what the enemy is trying to do is he's trying to plant a seed in your life uh, to get you to become unanchored to what you know. Amen. And I'm not talking about our culture. I'm not talking about the things that we do and enjoy doing as Refuge Temple. I'm talking about biblical standards that should never be moved, that should never be changed, that should never be tampered with. Glory be to God. And I've come to tell you that it's the plan of the enemy, amen, to try to divert the church. Not only just divert the church, but pervert the church. Ah, uh, yes, Lord. But I'm come to tell you on this morning is that when you got the real Holy Ghost, the real Holy Ghost gets into every part of your life. Amen. The real Holy Ghost gets into everything. Hallelujah. Have you ever seen ants? Amen. Hallelujah. When ants invade something, it gets into everything. When you've got a real uh, 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 challenge with ants, they get into everything just like the Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. When you get the Holy Ghost, it gets into everything. Hallelujah. It gets into your money. It gets in the way you treat people. It gets into who you marry. It gets into who you date. Hello. Yeah, I know I got to sit down now. But the real Holy Ghost won't let you do some things. The real Holy Ghost won't let you date people who don't have the Holy Ghost. They don't believe that no more, Bishop. But that's what they told me. Yeah. Hallelujah. And it worked for me. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. That's why uh, even when the going get tough in your marriage, uh, the first inkling is not to quit. It's to pray. Glory be to God. When you, when you have something anchored in Jesus Christ, the real Holy Ghost steps in and gets into everything. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. And so the Apostle Paul says to them, you were doing well. And I've come to tell you today, before this pandemic, some of you were on fire for God. Now it seems as if somebody's got to pump you up. Ah, uh, yes, Lord. But I've come to tell you, uh, all the hell that I've been through, I don't need anybody to pump me up. I've got a pump on the inside. Uh, uh, I'm getting ready to go to my seat, but I've got a pump, amen, that I've got. Amen, hallelujah, almost uh, 40 years ago. Glory be to God, when God came into my life, uh, he put a pump on the inside. And I don't need the praise and worship team to sing me happy. All I've got to do is think, uh, yeah, uh, of the goodness of Jesus. And, uh, and oh, uh, can I preach it like I feel it? Uh, and all that is done for me, uh, and something on the inside my soul and, uh, cries out hallelujah. And, uh, and I praise and thank God for saving me. Uh, hallelujah, what happened to you? And, uh, where it is now, you come to church, and, uh, and now it seems as if and, uh, you want to come into God's house and, uh, like somebody's here to entertain you. Uh, you are not here uh, to be entertained, uh, but you're here to give God the glory, uh, the honor, and the praise. Uh, you are here uh, to lift up the name of Jesus uh, because you realize uh, that if it had not been uh, for the Lord who was on your side, uh, where would you be? Uh, and I know that I may not have a whole lot of folks, uh, but there's at least about 20 or 30 of you uh, in the house on this morning uh, that can say with me uh, that I don't care uh, what the world is doing, uh, but I'll take Jesus for mine. Uh, you can have uh, the whole wide world, uh, but I'll take Jesus for mine. Uh, and I know uh, that there are a lot of folks uh, who are now content uh, with staying uh, at home. Uh, and I read one statistic, uh, and the statistic said uh, that there are some folks uh, that said I'll never uh, go back to another building church uh, for the rest of the days of my life. Uh, and if that's all right with you, uh, that's all right with me. Hallelujah. The words say work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. But I don't know about you. 
but I need the church I need the church like the sun need the sky I need the church like the mountains need to be placed above the atmosphere I need the church hallelujah with everything in me and I know that there are some of you that before this pandemic you were on fire for God but I feel in my spirit that somebody has lost their joy you've lost your anointing you don't feel nothing and you don't feel nothing because something has happened to you but I understand that and sometimes it can be your own flesh and blood in order for me and you to stay close I've got to keep some distance in order for me to continue to love you to be my sister my own flesh and blood brother <laughs> sometimes 
You've got to put a little distance there. Because they'll stumble you. They'll make you fall. I don't know what's going on with the church now. I, you know, I'll let y'all do what you want to do, I guess. But when I was coming up, we didn't drink. I didn't get any amens, but that's all right. The reason, the reason we didn't do it was because, because, amen, uh, we didn't want uh, to, to, to attach ourselves to anything that could possibly stumble us in our walk with God. We were, we were so focused on trying to please God, we didn't want to do anything. Uh, whether one felt it was right or one say it wasn't right, amen, because who you ask, depending on what they say, amen. Uh, but, 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 but when we, were, we, wanted to, we wanted to serve God with all we had, now it's nothing to sit at the table with the saints and they order margarita. What, what, what happened? Where, 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 where did we go? Who, who, who? Well, I was, I was reading something and, and, and somebody said, and this is the very same spirit that the Apostle Paul was trying to attack. I'm going to leave y'all alone, y'all. I'm going to leave y'all alone. But This is the same spirit that the Apostle Paul was trying to attack is that you've got to be careful because the only thing the enemy is looking for is a foothold. <laughs> and once he gets that foot in the door, he steps right in. Well, I, 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 I know he's not saved. I'm just going to go out to dinner with him. I'm just going to go out to dinner with her. I know this is old school preaching. We don't preach like this anymore. But I found that the word of God is true in being unequally yoked with unbelievers. You've got to be careful because once your feelings get involved, <laughs> I don't care how powerful and how anointed you think you are. Once your feelings and your emotions get involved? Well, I, I, he, he said he loves the Lord, but is he saved? Oh no, but he, he says he's a Christian, but does, has he spoken in tongues? Well, I believe he's saved. Have you ever heard him? Y'all, Mother Ford, they don't want to hear me this, but I'm going to leave y'all alone. I'm not... I'm not trying to get in your business, but, but, but what I'm trying to convince you of today is that you've got to be careful because the enemy has strategically planted some folks in your life to pull you away from God. The Bible says that God loves us too much to tempt us, and when we are tempted, we're tempted because of our own selves, our own will, and our own desires. You cannot play with the devil and think that you would win. Now, no. What you're saying, well, Bishop, that's old school. That's, that's, that's the way, amen, that, that, that they said it back then, but it's, we're in a new time. And I know we're in a new time. I know that you think things are different now, but I've come to tell you, I've seen it work for too many folks for me to cash this in for something that maybe, perhaps, could lead you down the right road. I'm going to stick with what I believe and what I know the Word of God to say. I'm not going to be turned on by my own thinking, my own philosophy. You hear me, young people going back to college? Do you hear me? Hold on to God. Hold on to what you know. Now, I'm not talking about 
necessarily anything that, you know, your, your, how, how long your skirt is. I'm not talking about all of that. But I do know that the Holy Ghost gets into everything. He gets into every area of your life. And when you want to please him, you allow him to get into every area of your life and he will lead you and he will guide you. You were running well. You, you, were, you were doing so well. You were, you were doing so well. You were witnessing. You were sharing the gospel. You were, you were out there. You were talking to people. You were, you, you were acting as if you were a child of God. But, but what happened? What happened? Now, now everything gets on your nerves. You stop talking to people now. Wait, wait, what, what happened? People can't even have a conversation with you without you getting upset. All of that is a sign that something is wrong spiritually. So the Apostle Paul says you were running well. But who hindered you? Father, I thank you now for this time that you've given me. With my sisters and my brothers, Lord, I thank you, God, for this opportunity you've given me to share. I've given what you have given me, Lord. I have said what you would have me to say. Now, Lord, you work on the hearts and the minds of these, your people. God, we ask right now, Lord God, that please let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I'll take Jesus for mine. I'll take Jesus for mine. You can have this whole wide world, but I'll take Jesus for mine. Christ. Our phone number you can call right now. It's on the screen. You can call and our prayer warriors will pray with you. They'll hold you up in prayer. Perhaps you're losing something in the battle against the enemy. God wants you to know that today your life can be changed. Perhaps you're here today and you wanted to know the Lord Jesus Christ is your Lord and personal Savior. You can accept him and he will fill you with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Come on everybody stand to your feet at this time as we prepare our hearts to leave this place. Come on, say it one time with me. I'll take Jesus for mine. Come on, everybody, say it with me one time. I'll take Jesus for mine. I'll take Jesus for mine. I'll take Jesus for mine. Fathers, we leave this place, but never from your presence. We ask that you go with us until we meet again, Father. God, we ask that you would continue to strengthen our hearts and strengthen us, God. So, Lord God, that we would be all that you have called us to be in these last and evil days. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday. Make sure you go leading by the leading of the ushers. The side doors are open. You can use the side doors. You can have
to a 